So let's quickly just have a look at the historical development of ERP. So you can see 1960, what was the primary drivers was inventory and purchasing. Then they began to look at production scheduling and that evolved into MRP, which looked at production management. Then in the 70s, it was MRP and then they began to look at finance, uh, finances and adding labor costs, etc. And then it looked at MRP too. And this then began to look at major manufacturing resources. So I can now look at, okay, I need to make all of these items, but it's physically telling me I need to manufacture everything where I don't have sufficient capacity in my, in my production facility. So I should schedule it. I should align when I should be making it. 1980s, MRP2, then it looked at all the uh, additional internal resources. So you can see the evolution of what we are trying to do here. It evolved into ERP, which is then coordinated manufacturing and service transactions. The management of those limited set of resources that you have at your disposal in order to do that, to meet the supply and, and demand. Okay? 1990, <laughs> ERP then evolved internal customers and suppliers to internal supply chain management, where companies began to expand. Companies began to globalize. They began to have operations in different countries, different areas. Their tentacles began to spread, spread across the world as they began to realize that it was easier, cheaper, more cost efficient to send <coughs> non-crucial manufacturing initially into Asia and ship it back than it was to produce locally internally. But that then also created a reliance to manage that extension, how is it going to manage the control of all those resources and the planning and the scheduling and the inventory? Now where you're beginning to add an additional extension of your business. Okay? So this is just the evolution. I just want you to think about this in terms of how businesses have evolved. And as businesses have evolved and how the world trade has, has, and the world market has evolved and the evolution of economies of scale. Where is it best for me to do this? Okay? As that evolved, so it's also created a requirement on ERP systems to keep up with those requirements in the marketplace. They have to, because if they don't, people stop buying your software. Okay? So people are beginning to say, I, I require some software that is going to allow me to manage my relationships with my customers. I don't want anything to fall through the cracks. I understand the importance of uh, customer relationship management. I want everyone that deals, touches with my customers to be able to input that information in so I can surface any issues. I can surface and manage the relationship. I can chronologically trace what my relationship has been with this customer and put together plans to execute additional marketing plans to them. So this brought in the introduction of CRM and supply chain management again as it extended across into the supply. Okay. So lastly, we went to ERP, supply chain management, and now companies are saying, that's all good and well, but I want to take all of that information, that data. I don't just want it to be a report or information. I want to be able to do analysis on that so I can get intelligence from it, so I can begin to spot trends <laughs> What trends it will allow me to plan and forecast better? So, enter business intelligence. Now, all of these you will see are components back to the graph that I showed you as to what the marketplace spends. But ERP2, that term was coined in 2000 in an article by Gartner. Okay? And that article, I suggest you actually read it. It's quite an interesting read. It says, ERP is dead. Long live ERP2. And all the companies jumped onto the ERP2 bandwagon. Okay? The business solutions. So basically what it describes, ERP2. So what is evolution from ERP to ERP2? That's important. It describes, and again, what Gartner does is it tests the market, it tests the companies, the organizations out there, and it says, what else are you looking for your systems to do in the future? And then it says, well, this is ERP2 and this is what should be in it. And all the ERP companies race to provide that functionality. Okay? So 
what it describes is it's web-based software that provides real-time access to ERP systems to employees and partners. It's highlighted. Why? Because partners is your customers and your suppliers. And ancillary service providers to your business to ensure that you efficiently, and I'm going to drum this in, to efficiently get your services and goods to the marketplace. Okay? Such as suppliers and customers. The ERP2 role expands the traditional ERP resource optimization and transaction processing. So it says where ERP was limited to looking at providing companies that as its benefits. ERP2 has extended into providing, what is that? Remote access via the web, real time, in a way, to my employees because they're increasingly mobile workforce and likewise too as integration with my partners which is my suppliers and my customers okay. so ERP2 leverages information in the resources under its management to help the enterprise collaborate with other enterprises so ERP2 is more flexible than the first generation ERP obviously that flexibility is being, is being provided to employees as a mobile workforce and likewise, collaboration and integration into their partners. 